So I'm going to go over a cladogram practice problem. That will be something like you'll see in your test. And what we're going to do here is given a set of traits, okay, for these uh, five different species, uh, I want to come up with a hypothesis, a diagram, we call it a cladogram, that helps us see how possibly these species may have evolved and what are the most common ancestors. Remember, a cladogram is, again, is just a hypothesis. It's, it does not tell us exactly. It's just from observations from traits, whether we get them from morphology or we get them from um, uh, living species today. We use, of course, genetics, maybe nucleotide sequences or the types of proteins they use. Uh, but looking at these traits that are common and uncommon to them, we could put together a possible linkage of how these um, species may have evolved. So again, it's, it is a, a best guess estimate and not always, and, and the, the biggest thing is these are dynamic type of diagrams that can change um, if we get more information, especially if we're dealing with species that are now extinct. Any case, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to start with our drawing and I'm going to basically draw this little uh, line coming up and you you should know right away is that um, the, uh, the 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 oldest species would be somewhere down here in the the the, uh, um, the newest species or the species that has last uh, speciated or had a last common ancestor would be here so we're going to go from the oldest to the newest but again the clues of course or in these traits given to us. So looking at this, and we don't have to have the traits. Um, the positive tells me that the, um, like for instance, species V has it has trait one, trait two, and doesn't have three, four, and five. And that's how we read this. And we don't have to know what these traits are. Again, it could be four limbs, it could be amniotic cells, it could be number of chambers in a heart. It doesn't really matter. Okay. What does matter is do they have them? Are they common? or are they not common, meaning they don't have them. So in any case, the first thing that I do is I'm going to look for a species that has the least number. And the, the species that has the least number of traits in my book means it's a species that um, is probably the oldest and the ones that all of these have evolved from. So this is the common ancestor to all of them. All right, if we were drawing an evolutionary tree, which we're not, now this could be X and then of course the branching off up here and so forth and so on. Now we're not doing that here. We're just drawing something called a cladogram and there are some similarities here. It depends on how you want to look at it. But the cladogram, I'm going to start with my X uh, going this way here. So I'm going to do this. Okay. And this is my X. And the reason I did that, it doesn't have any of the traits. It's the oldest um, of the species probably and of course it's the common ancestor so all of them came from X because it has the least number and that's the first key so now I want to look at alright and again don't fall in love with these things have to be in order people like to look at these cladogram traits and think well it has to go one two three four five no it doesn't if we're doing this with fossil evidence who are we to say that two comes before three we may think five is more um, uh, how can I say it, generally more complicated or complex than 4, 5, 2, but we may not, that may not be right. These are all, again, best guess judgments here. So, um, what's common? Well, the trait 1, all of them have except for the oldest of the species X. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 1 here, and this 1's going to tell me that there was, an ev there was an evolutionary change between X and the rest of these. So V, W, Y, and Z are definitely down the road here. They evolved. So that's a trait that certainly you could say evolved from X. Okay. So who comes next? Well, um, I'm looking at Y and Z, and I, and I see that there is some uh, similarities. They both have five, and then there's Z who has something different. So this kind of screams to me that, hmm, Maybe these guys are on a branch that's, that, that uh, Y and Z are both common for trait 5. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure where to put that, so I'm going to go and look over here. And then I see um, V and W, okay, both have trait 2. All right, so that's interesting to me. Uh, they both have 2, uh, so, uh, and of course Y is a little different. 
so hmm, I may want to put a V here, and I'll explain in a second here. If I put a V here, like my lines aren't very straight, and I, again, it's probably very helpful to put the traits where they're evolution. You don't have to put them down on this bar here. You can put them actually in these branching points. So I'm going to put two. And then here's what I'm thinking. Because the second trait only occurred, all right, only occurred with Y and V, and there's nobody else that has it, my guess is that um, Y evolved from X, but then because there's no other species that has the second uh, trait except for Y. The rest of these um, uh, species are not going to show that trait. So if that's the case, if you're thinking with me here, then Y is probably a branch point right here. So I would put a Y here. And if you've guessed it, yeah, I can say that the third trait probably evolved here. And that's kind of like a, if you think about it, it ends there. You notice uh, Y and Z don't have four or three. So it, it seems like these traits kind of branched off and did their own thing and then uh, there was evolution beyond there. So one is on this line and when it became two, we had two what? Creatures that had two. So there was a common ancestor here, if you think about it, that both had two. And there it is. And then y, a W became its own species when it had this new trait. Of course, V keeps two. So that's how you would look at it. For me, it's because I saw an ending here, clearly that's a branching off. If I saw other things having three as well, then I would definitely grow it down here. Okay? So that's my guess. Now, the next thing I see is Y and Z. And I, I see a similarity here. They don't have two and three, which makes sense. We're back on this one. They both have one, right? So Y and Z both have one because they're above there on this line. Now, what am I going to do here? Well, I see they both have five. Don't fall in love with the idea that it has to go in order. We, again, these are just our best guess hypothesis or hypotheses. So maybe five isn't going to be the most complex. But I can see that Y and Z both are there. So what I'm going to draw here is to show that type of evolutionary uh, trait, I'm going to put five here. So it screams to me that at this point, there was an evolution of that trait. And what we have is Y and Z, okay, beyond this point. Now, Y doesn't have any other trait. Oh, sorry, um, in this case, Y has one trait and Z has two. So we know Y and Z come here. So there's a branch off here. We see that Z has an extra trait, and what I'm thinking is, again, writing the traits down are very helpful. You don't have to, but for me, I definitely need to. I see this is the only one that has four, so for me, this is a four. This is where the evolution occurred for that trait, and that would have to be Z. All right, and then a Y had a branching off. It has the fifth and it has the one, and you could see from your, my work, you can follow that, and this must be the Y. So by putting the traits in my collatogram, I can follow and match the traits that are posted in the table. Notice X is below the first trait. There's no trait, so X doesn't have any. Notice V must have one and two. There it is. Notice Y has one, two, and three. Okay, and then of course notice um, Y has 1 and 5, there's the 1 and 5 up this way, and then Z has 1, 5, and 4. So it is real helpful to put where the traits evolved into your collatogram. You don't have to put that there. For me, it's vital to keep this organized, and I hope my way of thinking opened up some doors here how to do this. Again, the biggest mistake people have is they think that these traits have to go in order. And it's probably teacher's fault for giving cladograms to do that are too easy that go in order, okay? As I am guilty as well. I'm guilty of being tall. My friends in biology. <laughs> okay, so in any case, I uh, hope that helped. And again, great problem, okay? Uh, and one to re certainly review. And you know, what I would do is I'd change this table up a little bit, see if you can draw your own. All right? All right. Hope that helped.